Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are back for another In the Hunt, and this is Sate Saitama Part 2. And we're going to start with the game aisle, which is actually pretty lengthy and healthy with stock. Now, I underestimated the amount of footage that I had, so the, the retro display case will actually be in Part 3, so definitely keep a lookout for that. But we're going to start here. We have a couple of light gun variations for the PS3. We have Time Crisis 4 that includes the GunCon 3 for 7,000 yen before tax. Pretty clean box. And then up above, we have the Big 3 gun shooting bundle with the move for 8,000 yen. And that's actually a great bundle there. And then we're going to make our way into the hardware here. And there's quite a bit, as you can see. And I guess we'll just start at the very top with the PlayStation uh, variety of... Uh, consoles here mainly uh, ps3 and a lot of them seem to be hovering around the 9,000 8,000 uh, mark there although we have the fat for 4,000 yen and then we have a ps2 with the non-working internal battery coming in at 5,000 yen but that white color is actually pretty mean looking and then here we have this famicom now the famicom here is is actually pretty clean coming in at 20 20,000 yen as you can see um, it works it's just giving a warning that you will need um analog uh, connections for your TV. And then what you're seeing here is the Hudson grip that's kind of holding everything together. And man, this thing is clean. And it's almost tempting. If, if I didn't have a spacing issue, then I would definitely dive into the, the world of Famicom. But nice and clean, this one. And then next, th next to that, we got some more Nintendo greatness. We have the N64. And a couple of varieties, you know, we have the standard units here for 6,000 yen. And then we're going to upgrade things to the gold unit for 7,000 yen. And then we're going to go premium at 20,000 yen for the Nintendo 64 Pikachu edition. Now, this one is pretty clean. And this is, a, this is actually a console that I've been seeing more and more of lately. Um, but there it is. And especially if you're into collecting Pokemon, then... You know, this is going to be, I guess, uh, what you would call a grail piece for you hardcore Pokemon uh, collectors. And then next to that, I do like the, I do like the color scheme of the, the Pikachu, and it seems to go well with this Orange Spice GameCube. Although for the GameCube nowadays, I kind of prefer the purple colored unit, which I hardly see nowadays. It's usually the black, the silver, or the orange. And then we have the glorious Nintendo Switch. This seems this is definitely the the hot system here in Japan. And next to that we have the Wii 20th anniversary Super Mario Bros bundle. And I do like the red colored Wii. I actually have one back home in the states. And not too bad of a price there for considering the condition of the box. And then we have 6000 for the Super Famicom and next to that we have a couple of Model 2 Sega Saturns. Although as you can see the one on the left is a little bit of a uh, has some sun fading going on and then we have the mega drive freaking love this system and only at 5,000 yen that's not too bad of a price and then it just kind of shows you everything that's included and then we have these uh that's for the nintendo switch with that big old controller i'm not sure for what game and then we have guilty gear strive for for 25,000 yen wow that's expensive didn't uh, didn't rec uh, realize how expensive it was, but here we have some some greatness. Let's have a closer look. We have the arcade power stick coming in at 5,000 yen, and it's pretty much just stating that the damage is mainly like the box. But if you're a if you're a hardcore collector, this is definitely uh, worthy for the collection. And then we have the the Mega Drive here coming in at 15,000 yen. The box seems to be clean. And the one thing that I do like about the Japanese Mega Drive is I do like that 16-bit font compared to the American one. I mean, it's just, uh, it's big, it's in your face, and it's a lot cleaner looking. Now, this one's coming in at 6,000 yen because of the condition of the box, and it is missing an AC adapter and an AV cable. But then in the back, we'll have a closer look here. You can see all the awesome uh, attachments that it, that it includes, like this Versus game, the Mega Answer, the Mega Modem, and of course the Mega CD. And then we have some marketing mumbo jumbo here. Feel free to pause if you want a closer look at that. But I do like the design and uh, the design scheme of the boxes there. Nice and uh, nice and cool looking. And then we have some more. Uh, we have a, a Wii U there and a Ring Fit. 
and of course the PS2 Slim at 10,000 yen, which looks freaking awesome in its vertical mode. And then kind of back to, to towards the end, we're just looking at a few other accessories here, namely this uh, Light Boy for the Game Boy Advance, which is definitely much needed for this system. And if you don't have it modded, which I kind of I kind of like to I, I like to leave the systems uh, you know stock, but man the the Game Boy Advance was kind of bad with that. And then we have component cables for the Xbox, the original one, which is kind of a rarity here in Japan. And these cables are even more rare, I would say. And then we have uh, Capcom, the Power Stick. The Power Stick Fighter, which has an interesting design, which I, you know, I gotta admit, I do like it. I even like the whole scheme of the box. It's like totally early 90s. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take a look at some games. Now, we have uh, 3DS, DS, and PSP, and we're just gonna kind of skim through this, uh, this section here. Um, feel free to pause if you want a closer look. This is in 4K, so hopefully uh, some of the details will shine through. Um, we have, of course, the, the awesome PlayStation 4, the PS3, and then at the very bottom, the GameCube. PS3, I freaking love that system, but I think I have everything uh, that I want for it. And then a couple of loose uh, handheld carts there at the bottom. And then we have uh, um, Wii, Wii U, Nintendo Switch, and of course, Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Not a lot of titles, but they are present here. And PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, and a few uh, PC games there at the very bottom, which we'll have a closer look. But nothing that really caught my attention, honestly, here for the PS2. Well, there, there is one game which we'll have a, a, a little bit of a look at uh, later. And then we have the PlayStation 1 games. Next to that, we have the memory cards, which I do like that white colored memory card. And it seems to be uh, coming in at 300 yen before tax. And then here we have the Silent Service. This is an MS-DOS game coming in at 5,000 yen with a little bit of a uh, Japanglish, as you will see down here. We have real-time simulation game. Simulation, but... Anyhow, we'll have a closer look at the back, and this one seems to be hardcore with, the, of course, the language, uh, Japanese, so you're definitely going to have to have strong skills in that regard if you want to enjoy this. I wonder if this is any good. I'm, I'm typically not into these uh, simulation games, but I do like seeing stuff like this, especially, it just, it just screams like, uh, you know, from its era. And as you can see, look at that, we have the, the minimum system requirements. We even got the Kodansha seal. And then the original price, 12,800 yen. Anyhow, this, this this stuff here is just hovering above the retro display case, which will be in part three, as I mentioned earlier. But a lot of interesting, uh, a lot of interesting stuff just hanging out here. Got a few uh, Mega Man stuff here we got uh rockman x3 and then rockman soccer which i wonder if that soccer game is actually any good but here we have some saturn titles not very many we have panzer dragoon freaking love this cover I, I forget the name of the french artist but um that did that cover but it's great we have fighting vipers and biohazard at 1500 yen before tax this is a great uh port of the game and it even includes the spine card, so not too bad of a price there. And then we have Sonic R for the same price. And I gotta admit, I do like the soundtrack, uh, the music to this game. With its crazy lyrics. And then we have uh, some uh, PC Engine games here. This is coming in at 5000 and this one is coming in at 4500 so definitely not cheap. I wonder if those are uh, any good. And then we have this Mario and Wario. And I would actually love to try this because that's kind of a wild idea to be playing like a Super Famicom with a freaking mouse. And maybe this is just a collection of mini games, so this could be fun. Usually it's Mario Paint that you see, but I think, I don't know if I've ever seen this thing before. This may be the first time, I can't remember. But kind of cool looking. Yeah, this could be, uh, could be very, very interesting, this one. And then we have 1,500 yen for this Sonic and Tails, or Sonic 2. 
for the Game Gear, which I recently saw at another hard off, complete in the box. But here, here's the PS2 game that I was referring to earlier, Goemon. Now, I believe this is like the second to last game that was on uh, handhelds and home consoles. I could be wrong, but this seems to be like an action RPG, and I wonder if it's any good. I think the DS version was the last one made. And then, of course, we have Royal Rumble for 1,500 yen. I actually haven't played this, and uh, but I wonder if it's any good. It's got to be good. These games are usually pretty fun, especially during the N64 PlayStation 1 era. And then we have this. I'm not sure what this is, but it's 100 yen, and it looks like a freaking Game Boy Advance cart, but it's not. I should have just picked that up just because it's so cheap. And then we have the Wii USB memory stick for 500 yen. I wonder how much is included in that thing. And then here we have this Pokemon mini thing, which I have no idea what, what this, how this would even run, but it's 500 yen. Haven't seen that kind of cart before, but it has some data on it, some chips in it, something. But anyhow, that's gonna be it for this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna take a look at the display case and here's just like a sneak peek at what you can expect. Um, like I said earlier, I had quite a bit of footage and it just doesn't really make sense to squeeze everything in into one episode. Anyhow, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. My name is JJ and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.